In this video, I'm going to show you how to have it so that the next button is hidden, but once a user has clicked on all of these buttons, the next button appears. And the user can click on these buttons in any sequence that they want. So, let's preview this slide. I've already got it set up, so I'm going to show you what it looks like as a finished product. I'll then show you how to create it. So the next button's hidden. I can't go forward. And I will click on these buttons. I'm doing it in random order. There you go. The next button's appeared. It'd be very easy to do it as, you know, once a user's clicked on number six for the next button to appear, because you'd assume they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can just say, you know, make the next button appear after that. But let's be honest, users don't do that. Users are just as likely to go six, five, three, four, two, one, and you still want the next button to appear. So I'll close the preview, and I'm gonna show you how I did that. Now notice on here, I've got all these different variables set up, and I've got different triggers as well, and I've got the next button hidden. So let's go to another slide. This slide is called Management Skills. It's exactly the same as the previous slide. The previous slide was Human Factors. So just a different title, but it's the same principle. What I'm going to do though, first off, I'm going to hide the next button. Now I do have a separate video on how to hide the next button, but I'll quickly do it here. So I want to change the state of the next button. Now the next button I realize is off my screen from my recording, but it is the next button. Change the state to hidden when the timeline starts on this slide. Press OK. So there we go, that's been created. The next step now is to create variables. So you click on this icon up here. Now I've already got some variables in place. I've called them human one, two, three, four, five, six, and these were from the previous screen. So if I just go back a screen, you'll see them. Human one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll see that they're associated with lots of things on this page. I'll go back to my management skills one click on the variables button and what we're going to do is create new variables so click on the plus icon give it a name now give it a name that is memorable and I'm calling it management because this is this page is dedicated to management skills call it management one because I want to create variables for each of these layers and there's gonna be six layers in total so management one type true or false and the default value is false. Press OK. Do it again for each of them. So I'll copy that just to make it easier. True or false? False. Create another one. True or false? False. The reason I'm creating six of them is because there's six layers and six buttons that we're going to be going into. And the reason you want to give them a good name that's relevant is because if you're doing a big project, you might have lots of variables in the project. And if you just left them as a default option, you won't be able to remember which page they link up to. Also helps if anyone else is gonna to have to edit this course once you finish with it. So I've created six variables. What I need to do now is go on to each of these layers. So there's six layers down the bottom here. I'm in layer one and I want to create a trigger. And the trigger is to adjust variable. So remember this, because I have this tendency to click on change state of, and I get confused. You are adjusting a variable on this layer. So adjust variable, pick the variable, so it's management one to true when the timeline starts on this layer. What this means is, is that when a user comes into this layer, the variable will change from being false, which is what we told it to be as a default, to true. Now click away from there, click back on that, copy it, so Control C, go to layer two, and then just change it. Say I'm going for layer three, I'm just pasting it, so Control V. So I'm gonna go to management three, oops, done it twice. If you do create two, just delete them. Layer four. Layer five. 
You can see it's quite a time consuming process. Less six. Okay, so we got we've got it. So on every single one of these layers, it's going to go to management. Well, it's going to change the variable from being false to true when the layer starts or the timeline starts on this layer. Go back to your base layer. What you now need to do is for each of these buttons, so you can click on the button itself, or you can just click on the side here. So currently when the user clicks on shape one, which is this one here, it will show the layer one. You want to add an extra trigger. So create a new trigger, and you want to change the state of the next button, which is down the bottom off my screen, to normal when the user clicks on shape one, and then this is where you need to use your variables. If management one is true, but also if management two, management three, management four, management five, and management six are all true. And remember, they become true once a user has visited that slide or that layer, I should say. Press OK. So you can now see this big list here. So always click away, click back on it, Control C, go to Shape 2, Control V, Shape 3, Control V. So we're going to paste them for all of the shapes. So what we've got, so let's have a look at Shape 6. So there's this button here is going to change the state of next button to normal when the user clicks on shape six if management one is true management two is true da, 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 all the way down to number six what this means is that once once a user clicks on any of these it will start the timeline and it will change the variable to true but it means that because we've got all these in a list they can do them in any sequence that they want now let's actually test this out and see if it works. So first off we're going to preview this slide. Next button's hidden. Number six has come up. Five, one, four, I'm doing them in random order. Two, three, and there you go. The user can progress to the next slide. So that's how you do that. Something else you can do. So I've got this piece of text here that says once you've looked at each element, you can progress to the next screen. Yeah, let's change that to um, go forward a slide. Now, I don't want that go forward a slide to appear until they've clicked on all of these buttons. So what I want it to do, I want the user to click on all of these buttons in any sequence they want then the next button will appear and this piece of text that says go forward to slide will appear as well. So to do that, if I go back to the first shape, click on all these variables, I'm going to, do, I'm going to copy it, so I'll do control C, I'll paste, control V. What we need to do on this actual text here is click on the text, go to states, and hidden. We want the text to be hidden when the page starts and then we're going to change the state of it. To change the state of, you need to find that button, sorry, that text. And there you go, it's text box three. Change the state of text box three, go forward a slide, to normal when the user clicks on shape one, if, and then order variables. Then we go copy that, paste it for each of the buttons. So shape three, shape four, shape five, shape six. Let's preview this. So you can see that it's hidden. Do these in, um, again, I'll do them in a random order. 
You can see the next button's appeared and also go forward, the slider's appeared as well. So if you want to do that, that's how you do it. One thing I'm going to show you though, this is a bit of a disclaimer, this is very important. On this slide, so it's the human factor slide again, I've created another version of this to show you. I'm going to show you, you know, it's just to let you know it's set up correctly, but I'm going to show you it not working. So something to be aware of. So I'm going to just do them. Right. So I clicked on all the buttons. Yep, you can see that. I'm clicking all the buttons and that next button's not appearing. It's now appeared. The reason it wasn't appearing is because this, this particular layer, which is number six, has got a transition attached to it, which means it takes a while for it to load. So I've gone into item six, go to transitions. I've got fade lasting for one and a half seconds. So I'm going to show you that again, just to prove to you that it doesn't work properly. What it is, it's because the transition is not fully actioned. So you need to wait the one and a half seconds for it to be completely completed. Because of that, the variable doesn't work. So if I just do I did click on six, but you notice it didn't quite appear. There we go. Because it had that transition waiting of one and a half seconds. So on this layer, what I'll do just to, to show you, I'm gonna remove it. I'll just put no transition and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing again. So I'm gonna preview this slide. I'm gonna go around just as I did before. So I'll start with number five. There you go. It works perfectly. So what it was is because there was a transition attached to this and because the user was clicking on the buttons before the transition had, had actioned, the variable wasn't working. So if you do have transitions, you need to be aware of that. And personally, I'd recommend you remove them because it just makes it work a lot smoother. The user's probably not going to notice anyway. Well, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, like the video. It helps me a lot, uh, particularly if you subscribe. And uh, I'll carry on creating uh, articulate storyline content.